Hello there, this is Dana Urquiri, author, speaker, survivor, and advocate. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy for you to join me. And today's topic is another really great discussion. And I think there are a lot of people who have been the black sheep of the family, or they are the family scapegoat, who are struggling with one or more toxic siblings and maybe even a narcissist. And you will really relate to today's discussion. So I am going to be talking about something that I think is just amazing. And this is positive as far as us in our healing journey. And so today's discussion is going to be about when the toxic siblings covert schemes backfire on them. So during this whole enlightening healing journey of mine, I have come to see things in a new light and a new perspective. Um, sometimes when we're in the thick of it, when we're in the midst of the horrific, psychologically abusive relationships, we don't always clearly see things or can discern what is actually happening. And so when we do eventually either gray rock or go no contact, even if we take a break, even if it is like a 30 day break or a one year break or whatever timeline you give yourself to just kind of time out, I need some safe space. And then we start giving ourselves, you know, quiet time, we could journal, and we really do unravel all of these different variables that go into the dynamics of the dysfunctional family, the toxic siblings, and what they're doing to us and all the crazy making. And we finally come to a place where we have like this big aha moment and we understand, wow, so much of what the toxic siblings had aimed to do, especially to hurt us, intentionally hurt us and harm us, it backfired on them. And so we're really coming to this new place, this amazing epiphany that just because they're attempting all of these nasty tricks and they're playing these mind games does not mean that it will go in their favor. And so what I've come to find out through a very recent epiphany, this brilliant revelation that I had the other day is that Yes, it will backfire on the toxic siblings. We have to understand when someone has very negative energy, you know, everything is based on energy. Everything, if we look at things in the physical realm and the spiritual realm, even if you start getting into all these other dynamics involved in relationships, we can understand that when there is something that has very negative, hostile forces behind it, very negative, low vibrational energy that is coming from, and we'll just say, the toxic siblings, what will happen is, they're bringing right back to themselves the toxic, negative, low vibrational energy. So everything is based on energy. And for us to accelerate our energy in a very positive way on our healing journey, part of it is to not get caught up in the manipulation, the gaslighting, and all of these tricks that the toxic siblings play. You know, when you don't play, the game ends right there. And so that is a big part of it. Now we talked about the acronym JADE, J-A-D-E, about not defending yourself, not arguing with the toxic siblings, not explaining yourself to them, and not defending yourself and all the different things that go into Jade. You could check it out. I have several videos that share the Jade technique. Super powerful people. I am telling you, this is a game changer for your healthy boundaries. But let's chat a little bit about the toxic siblings who have a ploy to hurt you, to harm you, you know, they do a lot of things in secret. You may not be visually seeing what is going on behind the scenes because we have to understand now anyone who is of a toxic nature, especially 
siblings who are very psychologically abusive or even physically abusive, we have to understand that their actions speak louder than words. So we can really come to a place in our recovery process where we can understand how traumatic it is for us, but we can also really come to a new place of understanding that many times all of the siblings, you know, manipulation and gaslighting and retaliation has blown up in their faces and it backfired. And so let's get into this deeper topic. So when I had this big epiphany and this revelation, I started thinking about my own toxic siblings. And I'm sure many of you have already watched so many videos. I mean, there's a lot of videos and content I have sharing my own personal experience. So feel free to check out all of the videos, so many, especially beginning in 2018. So for three years, there's a lot of content. And, and you know, the one thing I have to say is this. You know, when I reached a place where I did go public and sharing my personal experiences with narcissistic abuse, child abuse, toxic sibling abuse, and all the three ring circus that goes on in this unhealthy family dynamic, what happened was um, my toxic siblings were furious. I mean, they were just absolutely outraged you know how dare she take this to the public how dare she talk about us you know of course they don't want family secrets exposed they have fooled so many people especially especially on facebook you know i no longer visit any Facebook, you know, I'm no longer active on Facebook. Many of you already know I left and deactivated a year ago my Facebook account. Obviously, that's a different topic. But the point is this. When I had been on Facebook, I had seen the unbelievable amount of superficial Facebook posts that especially my one older sibling did constantly post about that she's this great Christian and oh, she's she's having all this wonderful encouragement and oh, the inspiration and oh, she loves to throw out all the religious scriptures and act like she is such a big believer. But God says, by your fruit, I will know you. So we have to look at the toxic siblings and look at the fruit. Do they have the fruit of the spirit? Is there kindness? No. Is there compassion? No. Is there empathy, love, respect? Is there grace? Is there mercy? You know, love is the highest vibration and love is what God calls us to. He even says to love your enemies. Wow. You know, I can be really upfront and honest that sometimes it's really hard for me to love people such as my toxic siblings especially when they have psychologically abused me and literally thrown me under the bus and tried to destroy me and my career and my reputation. So it's not easy to love our enemies. And yet we strive to really get onto a new spiritual path that we will enlighten ourselves to some things that we may not see on the physical realm, but we can understand so much more spiritually that sometimes these people who do hurt us, such as the narcissist and the toxic siblings, are not in our life by accident. Instead, there are times we have to come to this place, the sacred place where we can accept that God is using even the worst traumas of our lives, the most horrifying, hellish ordeals that we have experienced, including those rock bottom moments when we walk away from toxic people. And we are learning that there is some valuable life lessons about these toxic, unsafe unhealthy relationships. So they teach us something about ourselves. They teach us something about other people. They teach us about family, that blood is not thicker than water. It teaches us also about where are we heading on this journey? Do we want to be bitter and have 
all of this hate inside of us and it's like poison and it's like a garden that becomes infested with weeds and there is no joy in that garden. There is no sunshine in that garden. It is consumed in darkness. Or are we going to take a higher path over here, a higher path that is going to really test our faith and going to transform us spiritually where we can come to this very beautiful new awakening where we can come to terms with, this is my experience. Yes, the abuse happened. Yes, it was painful, very traumatic. We may have complex PTSD. We may have anxiety. We may have compounded trauma. And we may have hit rock bottom at one time in our lives. But by God, we're going to rise up. We're going to climb that mountain. And we're going to reach the other side. Because that is the spiritual healing of broken relationships. We choose to not be bitter people, to not be hateful people like the toxic siblings, but we decide to take the higher path, to ascend ourselves, to evolve, to grow, to learn, to gain, gain wisdom and insight and discernment about these dysfunctional dynamics and relationships, especially with our family. And we come to a place where we can just accept you know, um, there are five stages of grief, and one of the stages is acceptance. And I have moved through acceptance. I can accept that the past is done. I can't fix my siblings. I can't fix what they did to me. I can't fix their twisted mindset. We can't fix people who are broken. But what we can do is release them bless them, wish them well. Some of us are even going to go to great lengths to pray for the people who hurt us. We're going to pray for God to do what only he can do, or whether you believe in a higher power, whether it's some like the universe, everyone has a different spiritual belief. But regardless of what your system of belief is, whether it's super religious or very, very spiritual, understand that we can send out positive vibrations and ask the universe, this higher power, this creator, to give grace, to help give wisdom to those who harm us, who are our enemies, and to help them to learn their life lessons too. Because we know that this is part of their life lessons. It's no accident that they were part of our lives. So when we really start looking at these covert schemes and all the sinister tactics that were used by the siblings to harm us and then it blew up in their face we can understand that they underestimated us they thought we would lay down and take it they thought that we would bow down to their evilness, their maliciousness, their psychological abuse, and their bullying. And they thought we would just let them do what they do. And we're not going to say anything. And we're going to stay silent. And we're going to stay loyal to them. No. Most of us have really awoken up. A lot of us are on a beautiful spiritual transformative journey so much like that beautiful butterfly who left that dark cocoon who got her wings or his wings and we are soaring high and we have gained so much knowledge and so when i had this amazing revelation about my toxic siblings and how their tricks and mind games and manipulation backfired on them um, it goes back to around 2016, 2017, when I did notice and I could clearly see that my toxic siblings were lashing out at me, especially on my Facebook author page. So I used to have this Facebook author page and had thousands and thousands and thousands of viewers and followers and people who really were there to encourage me and to become friends with me. And they were very thankful for my inspiring content. And so what happened was there were times where I would have a post 
on this Facebook author page in which I shared some hard rock moments. You know, there was this one particular event that took place and, and actually it was a very heartbreaking situation. And, and, and so as a writer, as an author, as a speaker, as a truth seeker, I oftentimes share my own personal experiences because it helps other people. They don't feel alone. They finally feel like, wow, someone really gets me. Someone really understands me. And I'm not the only one going through this. And people really do appreciate that. But my sisters did not appreciate that. They wanted to silence me. They wanted to censor me on Facebook. They demanded that I did not post anything to do with them or my narcissistic mother or the family etc, etc, etc. And so what happened was there was a, a situation and I'm thinking it was around 2017 that it occurred in which my one sibling and I went with my mother to the hospital because she was undergoing cancer treatment with chemotherapy and radiation. And so we were there and my mother was getting her medical testing and out of the blue, I mean, it was so random, I did not see this coming. So my sister said to me, you need to start preparing and writing mother's obituary. And I just really didn't see that coming at all. I mean, it really hit me hard because, you know, when you're at a place where you are watching your loved one die, and, and remember, regardless that my mother was a narcissist, she's passed away. So of course, this is all past tense now. My mom passed away last year, but when my mom was alive and I did come to terms with that she is a narcissist, she did psychologically, physically abuse me as a child and as an adult. It's, it's hard. It's really hard, but I still love my mother. And so there I am in a big area of the hospital near a reception area where people see, you know, they sit down and wait for the patient to return from testing. And what happened was my sister says, you know, I think you should write this obituary. You know, you need to get started on it. You're the writer in the family. You need to be the one to do it. And I just literally had an afternoon meltdown. I mean, the tears are falling down my face. I'm crying. Um, I think it just hit me hard, this whole thing on my mother passing away. And so I was at a place in my life where I did not even understand narcissistic abuse. So in 2017, I wasn't where I'm at now. I mean, back in those days, I was not even aware of or fully even acknowledging. I was not educated about toxic siblings, about narcissistic abuse, gaslighting, smear campaigns, retaliation, manipulation. This was all like Chinese. Like I did not understand it. I, it was not part of my life. And so I didn't get to that place yet. So there I am. I'm crying. Ha! Huh, talk about humiliation. Talk about a humbling moment when you are crying your heart out in the middle of a hospital where everyone's watching you. And so for me to process that pain, I write. You know, as an author, as a speaker, as a writer, I write. I write where it hurts. I write where there's truth. I write in the healing. I write in the midst of pain. I write to understand more so what I'm going through. A lot of times when we're writing, what happens is, and this is also with journaling, so journaling is so therapeutic. What happens is when we put our feelings, these human emotions, onto paper, okay, so now we could see it and we could read it, it helps us to understand what's going on. It can help us in our own recovery process. It could bring light to something that at one time we might have been confused about. And so I had good intentions for writing a blog about this hard rock moment with my mother dying of cancer. You know, that is a hard thing. What's even harder is in 2018, when I came to terms with, this is not just my mother, this is a narcissist. So it made it like a double-edged sword. So it really did cut like a knife. But what happened was after I posted this blog and then I shared it on my website and from there shared it on my author page on Facebook, my sisters were so ticked off 
that they must have had a little family meeting. Oh, they had a family meeting about Dana, the scapegoat. And so they decided to have the one sister, the one who was with me at the hospital, they must have ordered her, you're going to be the one, you're gonna call her on the phone, you're gonna tell her no, you're not allowed to write about that. You're not allowed to talk about family secrets. And you need to tell her, no, you're never going to do this again. No more blogging, no more writing. Oh no, you're not allowed. We don't give you permission. And so what happened when she called me on the phone and she said she and my sisters are highly disturbed that I shared a blog post about something that I'm personally going through and they wanted me to stop. So stop blogging, stop writing, stop talking. This is complete censorship. So, you know, simple terms are, yes, they were silencing me. So I was very, very clear on that they were overstepping my boundaries. You know, hey, I could write about whatever the hell I feel like writing about. Forgive the French there, but let's keep it real. You know, when you are a truth seeker and when you are living your own true self, you're living in your essence, you're living in your passion and your God-given gifts. And writing is my God-given gift and it is my passion in life. But truth seeking is a big part of that. You know, when we're telling the truth about abuse, oh, those toxic people want you to be quiet. They want to censor you and to silence you and to tell you that they're going to punish you if you don't be quiet, and trust me, they aim to hurt you, especially if you speak up and break the silence. So what happened was they were on a power trip. My toxic siblings are control freaks. They will manipulate, they will do anything they can, and there is a push. So when they did the push, meaning pushing me to be silenced, pushing me to be quiet, pushing me to be under their thumb, I pushed back and said, no. And I immediately blocked them on Facebook. So at that timeline, I blocked them on Facebook and I said, this is my life. I will talk about, I will write about, I will educate, I will encourage, I will equip other people going through the same thing with some helpful, inspirational, motivational information. And if you don't like it, that is your own problem. And you know, we can't fix these people. We can't change these people, but we can decide if we will remain silent or if we will stand up for ourselves. And this goes back to last uh, week's video on how oftentimes, you know, the silence in some cases can actually be helpful, but in other cases, it could be harmful. If you continue to let someone manipulate you, um, push you around, threaten you, gaslight you, provoke you, and censor you, it is doing you a disservice because people pleasing is extremely damaging. And when someone is hurting us in this psychological manner, it is quite abusive and we have an option. And the option is to say, no, my boundaries are my boundaries. You either respect it or you could take the highway. And that is just the way it is. And so this was part of my life journey. And so in 2017, uh, when push came to shove, I had to block them because I was not putting up with the censorship and the silencing and manipulation. Of course, they became even more angry. That's when they started retaliating. They created smear campaigns against me. They tried to destroy my reputation, destroy me as an author and speaker, destroy all of my relationships, triangulate relationships, even with people I didn't even know. It's ridiculous. But these are the manipulative schemes that toxic siblings will go to great lengths in effort to act like you're the crazy one, act like you're the problem, act like it's all you, it's all you. That's what they say. 
Oh, it's all of us against you. So please understand that's a mobbing mentality. And if they're still stalking you, if they're still bullying you, if they're still manipulating you, if they're still hounding you and sending you nasty emails, text messages, or comments, or private messages, say on Facebook, you have options to take back control of your life, your sanity, and your peace of mind. You could block them just like that, report them on social media, understand a few things. They will, re they will create numerous accounts on social media. So I have no doubt, trust me, they think I don't know what's going on. Oh, I know what's going on behind behind the scenes. In The Secret, they're creating many different accounts on YouTube, on Facebook, and Twitter, and what have you, trolling on my page. Oh, yeah. So, understand this. Be aware of this. Understand that you might not see a face in the picture that you recognize. It might be some alias name, an alias account, under an alias email, but it's all linked to their cell phone. And that's going to be saved for another day when we could get into that topic because there is a way that we could find out who these trolls are. Oh yeah, they're using the same phone number. Typically they're using the same cell phone even if they have hundreds and hundreds of different accounts. We'll save that for another day. Something for you to think about. In the meanwhile, we have to understand that the motive behind what these toxic siblings do, it's evil, it's sinister. Again, where is the fruit? If you call yourself a good Christian, which this is what the siblings claim they are, oh, we're believers, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Because I only see poison. I only see evil. I only see that they sold their soul to the devil. And, and, and ultimately, we can't be responsible for what other people do. We're not responsible. Only toxic siblings can be accountable. And there will come a day. So whether you believe in karma, that what goes around comes around. Oh, yeah. Or whether you believe in what people reap, they will sow. Whatever your beliefs are, and even if you have no beliefs at all, because everyone's coming from a totally different background, a different religious background, different spiritual thinking and belief systems, understand understand that it's not going unwatched. The things that they do in the secret, the things they have said and done to you, if they have harmed you, if they have punished you for setting healthy boundaries, for speaking up, for defending yourself, if they have lashed out at you, understand that what they say, what they do, even if it is in secret, it is not going unseen. So there is a higher creator who is seeing everything. And I personally believe that everyone does reap what they sow. And that is why we take the higher path. That is why we choose to release the people who are destructive and unhealthy for us. We can understand that, yes, it is very much like a poison. It is like... They are a poison and a garden, and they turned this beautiful garden that had wonderful, lovely, blooming flowers, and they turned it into disgusting, ugly, black, rotted, moldy weeds and poison. And we could take that garden and consider this your life. This garden is your life. And you start plowing through, and you start weeding through, and you start pulling one by one. And what will happen is you'll start seeing more clearly. You'll start getting your freedom back. You'll start having more discernment and wisdom. You'll start feeling liberated and empowered. You'll become a truth seeker. You will become someone who will ascend spiritually on such a higher level that now you could understand that not everybody's meant to stay in your life. So people who are very low vibrational, they're not meant to stay in our lives forever, including family. Just because we're born into a family does not mean that they're safe, loving, kind, or gentle. And we can go into a new life pathway that takes us into um, 
amazing healing and the trauma recovery and we awaken to the truth we can have enlightenment and we can we can just have grace you know we have grace that we didn't know what we didn't know in the past we can extend grace to those who are still very low vibrational people who are not on the same spiritual journey as us you know we could give out positive thoughts for them wish them well bless and release let them go let them go and just embrace this moment. Nurture yourself, love yourself, um, stand strong in who you are at the core of your essence. Rise above toxic dysfunctional relationships and understand that there is a purpose for that pain. And we can take that pain and turn it into ultimate gain because then we transform and we grow and we evolve. And then we, in turn, can educate others about toxic, destructive relationships. We could then help others. We could guide them onto the pathway and give them helpful, practical tools to salvage their sanity and to find freedom. And this, this is something that I believe of, you know, I believe in and I'm passionate about. And that's why I've gone public, you know, is because I understand the motives, but I'm not going to engage with unhealthy, toxic, psychologically abusive people. And you don't have to engage with them either. And so we can understand that in the end, at the end of the day, before you go to bed and lay your head down. You can go to sleep having peace and knowing that you did the best you could, that you couldn't fix these people, that we have to release them. We can't fight with them. It's very unproductive. So before we go to sleep, we can just rest knowing that we did the best we could under the very unpleasant circumstances and that we did take a higher path and we could rest knowing that we're on a new road to healing and to hope and to increasing our wellness and so today share with me do you have toxic siblings did their covert schemes backfire did it just kind of blow up on them what did you discover did you discover that your toxic siblings underestimated you oftentimes this is what we do discover they didn't think that we would you know speak up they didn't think that we would rise above the obstacles with them they didn't think that we would succeed in life you know what we don't need revenge because when we're happy and when we're successful and we're living out our passionate pursuits, that, that is our rich reward. And so take that higher path today. Share with me if you have toxic siblings, if their covert plans and schemes and ploys just backfired on them. And I would love to hear your story. So like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being a part of my healing journey, and I so look forward to hearing from you and your own stories about your toxic siblings. God bless and have a beautiful day.